Neil, I want to I want to finish up our conversation here um, and see how we can incorporate see how our listeners can incorporate this in their lives and specifically basketball players. So I know a lot of parents listen to this, but a lot of basketball players do too. Yeah. And you've got so much more knowledge now in the breath, on mindfulness, on the cold than you did when you were a player. So yeah. if you could kind of go in a time machine and talk to young Neil, like what kind of protocols would you, you suggest that young Neil would do to, you know, help him either in performance in recovery in mindfulness. Yeah. We'd love to hear your prescription on this. Yeah, um, I'm lucky in the job that I do now that I work with lots of elite athletes, so Olympic champions, professional teams, and you know what I would what I would say to them is what I would say to myself back there in, in all those years ago that you know if we look at performance, we can break performance down roughly speaking in three parts: your your preparation, your performance, and your recovery afterwards. And really, our control of our breathing is is essential to every part of that process. So let's say anyone who's playing in any type of you know uh, top level sport or even any type of sport knows those feelings before when you're preparing to to perform. So you know the heart rate can be too high, the body can be tense, um, we can you know the the mind can kind of run away with itself. But all those things can be reversed. The, the heart rate can be slow. The body can be soft. The mind can be prepared if we can control the breath. So really, our breath is a reflection of how we think and how we feel and how we react to the pressure. So if we were to look at a person, let's say they're going out to play um, this huge basketball game. If we were to look at their heart rate and their breathing, their respiratory rate, it would probably be quite high before they go out if they don't know what they're doing and of course that is eating up eating up all their energy it's also kind of draining them because their adrenaline is going up and then this kind of this drop comes as well so very simply learning how to control i like it we mentioned earlier that long slow exhale so if we're in the locker room or even if we're visualizing it days beforehand if we can control and bring our breathing to this long, slow exhale. From this, it'll be like this normally if they're really tense. But if we can slow that long exhale down, heart rate starts to drop, body starts to loosen, and all of a sudden then, it's not only the body starts to follow suit, the brain is always listening to the lungs. The, the brain is getting... The brain is getting probably a million trillion signals from the body every second. The messages from the lungs override everything because obviously if our lungs are in trouble, the whole body is in trouble, our life is in trouble. So the body is taking it, the mind is taking its cue, the brain is taking its cue from the lungs. So if the lungs start to calm down and they start to slow down and they start to focus on an exhale, that message goes to the brain and the brain starts releasing that down to the body. You're safe. Everything's fine even the blood vessels start to open up again. You know, so we feel more relaxed. There's more blood going. We don't feel as tired. So that, that controlling of the exhale is so important for any athlete. I've worked with Olympic champions who have, not, like they're gold medal winners and they're still struggling with these moments before the performance. And this long exhale is the thing that changes everything for people. My son was fighting in a, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament recently, and this is what we were doing before he went out and had to fight somebody. You know, in those moments of just like, you're being overwhelmed, you're about to step out onto the court, or you know. So that's the, that's the one thing to take away. Long, slow exhales. There's a whole chapter of it in The Blissful Breath. We return to it again in The Power of Cold. It's how we deal with the cold. It's how we deal with, with, with all that pressure. Once then into the, into the match, into the game itself, learning how to breathe under pressure is a more complicated kind of practice. But the simple thing for people to think about is when we start breathing through our nose, our breathing becomes calmer, our body becomes calmer. If we're breathing through our mouth, like I look back at pictures of me playing basketball and all I am doing is breathing through my mouth. So if we're breathing through our, through our mouth, we are pushing our body up into fight or flight. We are expending so much energy in that kind of state, heightened state. We're also dehydrating. 
So for the athlete who, you know, is, is really at the top level, this is a, a big, big problem as well. So even um, closing them out in, in, you know, timeouts, in free throws, whatever it is, and learning to use our nose again, that immediately calms the body down. Even just breathing through our nose for three or four in, inhales and exhales. So in the performance, and, and the way we get to that point is, during our practice, during our training sessions, if our coach is saying, like in the middle of drills, okay, boop, everyone breathe through your nose for the next minute, getting people to, to learn how to breathe through their nose. So then in the game, we can never remember the way to breathe in the crisis unless we have practiced it before the crisis. You know, let's say there's three seconds on the, sh- on the, on the shock, on the game clock, you're down by one, the coach is running a play to get you the ball to shoot this 20-foot jump shot. If you have not practiced how to calm your breathing before then, you are not going to be able to do it in that moment under that pressure. So, so for the coaches or parents listening to this, even getting their, their children to practice breathing through their nose when they're practicing, you know, to, when they're playing basketball before the match and before the game, and then in the game, just finding those moments to breathe through the nose. The recovery then, that's where the cold comes in, you know, so a nice hot shower, finish with cold, that's a great way to recover. But really, the thing that runs through elite performance in sports now is our ability to breathe. It's the thing that most people overlook. We all think about uh, levels of strength, conditioning, fitness, tactics, you know, all of those things. All of those things we get more from if we are able to control how we breathe. Love it. That's what I would say say to my younger self. (laughs) Love it. No, that's key. That is key. And I actually found myself breathing through my nose and slowing slowing my exhale down during that, just as a good reminder that not even a player, parents, anyone listening to this, anyone in society can use these tricks just to reset. And it can take you, you know, just a couple minutes and you will feel it immediately. 